We, the jury, find the defendant guilty. Now at 11, a former Minneapolis police officer convicted on all counts in a death that sparked a nationwide reckoning on race. Save me! The dramatic conclusion to the most high stakes trial in recent memory, prompting a flood of emotion spilling out into America's streets. We thank you for joining us at 11. I'm David Ushery. And I'm Natalie Pascarella. Millions of people watched right here on NBC as the judge read that verdict that could send Derek Chauvin to prison for the rest of his life. A guilty verdict on two counts of murder and one count of manslaughter, handed down after just 11 hours of deliberation by a racially diverse jury of five men and seven women, six white people and six people of color. A verdict that for many brought the relief of justice while still highlighting the need for change. Tonight, our team is in place. Place as demonstrations continue around the country. We'll begin with News 4's Ray Vieta, who's in the newsroom. Ray, you have more reaction to today's decision. David, police in Minnesota prepared for demonstrations, but the public safety commissioner said tonight is about patience and restraint. Their goal to let people demonstrate peacefully. There is no curfew. Outside the courthouse, for many, it was the verdict they had hoped for. A jury found Derek Chauvin guilty. All across the country, emotions sweeping the streets after a jury handed down the verdict. Outside the courthouse in Minneapolis, the relief palpable. I can't believe it. It feels there's poetry in the fact that he couldn't breathe, and it feels like we just got a breath of fresh air. Like for the first time, it feels like we can breathe. Tonight, the president and vice president acknowledging this verdict was a step in the right direction, but also admitting there was much more work to be done. The president describing systemic racism in the United States. The knee on the neck of justice for black Americans. Profound fear and trauma. The pain, the exhaustion that black and brown Americans experience every single day. Here's the truth about racial injustice. It is not just a black America problem or a people of color problem. It is a problem for every American. We, the jury, in the above entitled matter as to count one, unintentional second degree murder while committing a felony, find the defendant guilty. After more than 11 hours of jury deliberations, the judge read the verdict Tuesday evening. Derek Chauvin found guilty of second degree murder, guilty of third degree murder, guilty of second degree manslaughter. I ask for time and patience to review the facts, gather evidence, and prosecute for the murder of George Floyd to the fullest extent the law allowed. The trial lasted 14 days with closing arguments delivered yesterday. The prosecution argued George Floyd died because of Chauvin's knee on his neck for nine minutes and 29 seconds. The defense countered Floyd's death was a result of his drug use and health conditions. Inside the Minneapolis courthouse, Floyd's family feeling a range of emotions. I'm feeling tears of joy, so emotional that no family in history ever got this far. You know, we're able to get a, a guilty charge on all accounts. You know, we got a chance to go to trial and they took it all away. So this right here is for everyone that's been in this situation. Everybody. Everybody. We are here. We stand in a unit. Outside the courthouse, many standing in unison with the Floyd family. The former officer hauled off in handcuffs, awaiting his fate in eight weeks when he'll be sentenced for the death of George Floyd. The most serious charge carries up to 40 years in prison, but legal experts say it's likely a first-time offender could be sentenced to much less. Meanwhile, the attorney general tonight says a federal civil rights investigation is still underway. In the newsroom, I'm Ray Vieta. David, I'll send it back to you. Ray, thank you. And in Minneapolis, people are still gathering right now to commemorate what some call a turning point in history. Now, we've seen similar demonstrations tonight all across the U.S., including right here in New York. News Force Chucky Beckford is standing by in Manhattan, but we'll go to Miles Miller, who picks up our team coverage. He's in Brooklyn, where Miles hundreds gathered after the verdict. Well, David, as you well know, we were here all last year for days and months of demonstrations right here from the Barclays Center. They took off from the Barclays Center every day last year of those protests, and tonight was no different. Demonstrators taking off on foot right here on Flatbush Avenue, walking from the Barclays Center to Grand Army Plaza and eventually through the streets of Clinton Hill, Brooklyn, and, of course, Fort Greene, Brooklyn, all of it to call attention to the conviction of former Minneapolis 
Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin. Uh, and now, of course, as they made their way through the streets, people stopped in their tracks, stopped in their cars, honking in solidarity, making it clear that they are so supportive of this decision by the jury. The response to Black Lives Matter is nothing more than yes, it does. We have to hear all lives matter. We have to hear blue lives matter. We have to hear everything except yes. I'm really happy with the verdict. Um, honestly, I think what they did to George Floyd was completely wrong. You know, so I'm happy he got the 40 years that he got, and I'm glad that, uh, that he's going to be behind bars, man. The verdict is the right verdict, but you cannot defund the police. You have to reform the police. And demonstrators made it clear today, no, this was not justice. This was accountability. Accountability is just the first step on the road toward justice, they say. We're live at the Barclays Center tonight. I'm Miles Miller, News 4. Back to you. All right, Miles, thanks for that. A similar scene in Manhattan. A march stepped off from Times Square tonight. News 4's Shecky Beckford continuing our team coverage this evening with that part of the story. Hi, Shecky. Hey, Natalie, we're in Union Square right now where there were protesters just a short while ago, but they've cleared out now. As we've seen with protests throughout the last year, there were multiple groups protesting here in Manhattan, some starting in Times Square, some on the east side, all for the most part converging here in Union Square. Police, for the most part, gave protesters room, gave them leeway, allowed them to celebrate and also to vent in this very much impactful conviction of Derek Chauvin in the killing of George Floyd. Marching through the streets of Manhattan. These demonstrators view the guilty verdict for Derek Chauvin as a green light. Black Lives Matter. Not a stop sign. It's not over till they're all locked up, all four cops. For Mary Rothfuse, the historic conviction is no victory. Because it's really not a celebration. The life is still lost. The lives are still being lost. Reaction to the former Minneapolis police officer being found guilty of the now infamous killing of George Floyd has been swift and strong. He obviously killed him, and I'm really happy that we're going to start seeing some changes. At the crossroads of the world, a cross section of people said they believe the verdict was a foregone conclusion. I'm happy the cops proven guilty. Yeah. yeah. I'm so very happy about the guilty. It's pretty sad that it even took this long. Like, it's on video. And it's been like a year, and we had to sit around and wait. And from what we saw, things remained peaceful throughout the night. And so far, police have not reported any arrests here in Manhattan. We're live in Union Square. Checky Beckford, News 4, New York. All right, Checky, we thank you so much for that report. Our coverage of the trial, the verdict, and the aftermath continues right now on our NBC4 New York app. If you download that today, we'll go ahead and send you an alert when Derek Chauvin's sentence is handed down, too.